Davis, Sessegnon. The ball, Malfatano, great touch, Marahino! It's a moment to remember for Sado Barahino! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Don't go for them ones, Bundy! <laughs> Sado Barino was once considered one of the hottest prospects in English football. Hailing from a small country in East Africa, Burundi, Sado moved to the UK and found his love of football before joining West Bromwich Albion. Almost, you know, I fled away from Burundi uh, when he was war torn, and then coming in this country, you know, with my family, not really knowing anything about the country, the history, anything, and they've almost provided a second life for me. He made his debut for West Brom in the 2013-14 season with the highlight being this hat-trick against Newport County followed by the winner in the Premier League at Old Trafford against Manchester United. You must feel like this is a bit of a dream the last the last few weeks. It's just gone so well for you. Yeah, um, you know what? Nothing's impossible with God's in your life, and, and that's what I've always tried to do. You know, what I mean, I've put God in, in before before anything, and um, so I just thank God that He's gave me this opportunity, and my family as well, and back in the club as well. The following season, he managed to score 20 goals in 45 games across all competition. This got him his first England call-up and interest from other clubs, mainly Tottenham Hotspurs. Age 10, Sado Berahino was a refugee. Civil war racked his home of Burundi. Now he's got the call-up, the full England senior team. Five. He also lost his father, to whom he dedicates his goals. Sido first wore the three lions as a schoolboy, age 16. And aside from now being the Premier League's top scoring England eligible player, he has 10 GCSEs and strong views about the world. Everything was going so well. What could really go wrong from here? Maurizio Pochettino, the then manager at Tottenham Hotspur, made a bid to sign Berrino from West Bromwich Albion. These bids were rejected by West Brom and this angered Berrino who went on to tweet this. The damage had been done and then after this things got even worse. After poor form, he was subsequently sold to Stoke City for £12 million. It took him 35 games to register a goal for his new club, after which he found himself in legal issues. He was banned from football for a while after drugs were found in his system and later on was convicted for drink driving. The drugs? Yeah. What was that about? Why did you do that? Because no one knows that story. I don't really want to go into it. But Tell us maybe how much you can tell us. Okay, tell us what you can, if, if, if that's okay. All I can say is I didn't know how it got into my system and we had... Um, Specialists that analysed me, they took my hair follicle for six months. I've never taken drugs in my life. No one in my family takes drugs. There was nothing in my hair. There was no cannabis, no cocaine, no MDA, whatever they found. And the threshold that I found was literally, I was 10, 10 whatever it's called, um, over. So that couldn't have got me high or nothing. So it was just one of them things like, you go on a night out, you don't know who you're around and there's people out there to get you, whatever. And of course, I was in the, I was in the nightclub, so I hold my hand up for being irresponsible. And then from then on, it was just all crashed down. He was later released from his contract from Stoke three years early. In 2019, he went to Belgium to play in the first division. He signed for Walter Zorgen before the following season, going to Charleroi. But his stint in Belgium didn't last long, with this season coming back to the UK, signing for Sheffield Wednesday, who are now playing in League One. Hopefully he can now regain his focus and propel himself to the heights his future promised. Coming back home as well in England, so 
uh, got to meet the boys and the staff. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, the move happened on deadline day, but tell us how it sort of unfolded altogether. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, I knew about the interest uh, a couple of weeks into the transfer window. So my agent got to work and managed to speak to my old club about it and express to them how I would really love to come back home and play under a manager like Moro, uh, the gaffer. So uh, I was really happy that I got it over the line. Uh, got to do my medical in Belgium, it was a bit strange, but um, everything was done.